tell people how they can get tickets to the retreat and when it is, when the two are, they, they piggyback off each other. Yeah. Uh, so they could go to our website, wiredforhealing.com uh, or wiredforhealing.com slash retreats. Uh, they could use the code Serena 100 to get a hundred dollars off of their uh, ticket price. Uh, you can either pay in full or pay uh, a deposit for now. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching our videos. If you'd like to support us some more, you can explore our homemade natural skincare products at purelytallow.com. Thank you so much for supporting my small business. Hey everybody, welcome to the Carnival Revolution. I'm Serena and my special guests today are Scott and Jen from Wired for Healing. And we're going to get into lots of things with Scott and Jen today about their retreat that's coming up soon. And we're really excited about that. So guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Hi. Yeah, we love you. So we, I love you. And this is a rare occasion to have you guys actually sitting next to each other because you guys don't live near each other. So that's pretty cool. I'm so glad we got you at a time where you guys could be together. So let's start with, um, let's talk about Wired for Healing and what it means and what you guys do. Well, I want to start off by congratulating your audience for, for a couple of big reasons here. So first off, Serena is the best person I know in the space. And that's saying a lot because I've met a lot of incredible people, super intelligent. She's loving, she's caring, she's genuine. And uh, I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting Serena at our last retreat, and I was just blown away. I, I just love her to death. Thank you so much. I feel the second off, Yeah. And second off, if you are watching Serena's channel, then you are either becoming acquainted or have been acquainted with the carnivore diet. And... I think the carnivore diet is kind of like a gateway drug to a new life in a way for a lot of us. I could tell you for myself that I discovered the carnivore diet through actually Sean Baker, who, whose channel uh, I'll be on later today. But it was a huge stepping stone in uh, expanding my awareness in the world. And I think a lot of people on your channel could probably relate to that. I expanded my knowledge on the medical world, agriculture, uh, politics. Self-awareness. I mean, there's so much that I sort of felt like I was leaving the matrix from my old life, entering into this new life. And at the time, I, I really felt like carnivore was the end all and be all. I, I learned that for a lot of people, there could be a lot of different ste uh, stepping stones to achieving all optimal wellness and the truth for themselves and sort of getting out of that you know, that that identity that they've lived with for so long and that sort of matrix like world. But I think for for a lot of people, sometimes they need more. And that's why we started this community called Wire for Healing. It's all about getting back to our natural state, right? Our natural state is uh, well, at least my definition of it is, you know, getting back to nature, obviously, through a lot of different methods, whether that's through diet or lifestyle or what we do, brain retraining. Um, there's a lot of different ways of getting back to nature. But I think it's getting back to, you know, what I saw sort of as my former self. So myself, when I was living in the present moment, you know, uh, sort of, in, you know, really in touch with the community and relationships and, and, and nature and, you know, having a healthy diet and everything like that, it, it just encompasses everything. And I've taken all the difficult experiences I've had over the last, you know, six, seven years of living with extreme chronic illness. And I'm connecting that with my past, but also trying to help people, uh, you know, stand that you could have that. You could have that person who you were, but so much more than that. You could have that person and live that life with with passion and purpose and imagining and love and intention that you have as a kid but take all those experiences that you see are traumatic and you know huge challenges in your life and you you you, you get older as an adult and your heart breaks in two and you could take all those experiences and use it for your benefit and live this absolutely incredible beautiful life having had all those experiences and get and having that connection with who you were, right? Yeah, I think the reason that we that we really started Wired for Healing is we we both kind of, the carnivore diet changed both of us in a lot of ways and opened our eyes up to a lot of things. And like he was saying, when you learn the truth about food and you also 
experience feeling good, you know, your physical symptoms are feeling better, you experience feeling good for the first time in a long time, it changes you. However, for both of us, the carnivore didn't fix everything, right? I still, I still had a lot of the issues that I had before I started carnivore diet in the way of anxiety, depression, not really knowing who I truly was, not feeling at peace, not feeling calm and joyful. And so for some people, they start the carnivore diet and everything changes and they feel amazing and they go back to life as usual, right? But for a lot of people out there, it's not really a fix and they still feel stuck or they still feel like they're struggling with symptoms, reactions, or just don't have that inner peace. And so what we're doing is a lot of times for those people, the brain retraining aspect is really useful. It's it's like the way I see it is kind of like nutrition is down here, lifestyle is down here. They're like foundational principles that need to be adjusted in order for us to return to our natural state. But for some people, it's not enough. And then they need to go to this higher level of brain retraining, which is really just returning your brain to how it would naturally work and think. So when we feel fully present and joyful and full of love, we our brain acts a certain way. We notice the positive. We notice the beauty in nature. It affects our relationships. But we're when we're stuck in that chronic illness world, we're focused on ourselves. We're focused on our health. We can't see. We can't connect with people. We don't want to go out in nature because we don't feel good. We're fatigued. And our whole world starts to revolve around ourselves. So what brain retraining does is it helps to break that cycle. That cycle didn't happen overnight and it's not what we're born with. So when we're children, you know, everything is is this moment and we see the beauty and the joy. You can see them running around with no responsibilities and no cares in the world. But over time, we start to collect things and we start to narrow our vision. And, and especially when we get ill, all we're thinking about is our health all the time. So brain retraining is really about breaking that cycle getting out of the fight or flight response and training your brain to learn to be grateful and to learn to focus on things outside of yourself, but also to reconnect with the real you, because that's something that we see all the time in our community is people just miss themselves. And so brain retraining and what we're doing as a community is just helping people to see what areas of their life they can make adjustments that will help them physically to get back to a natural, healthy state mentally get your brain operating um, better, but also reconnect with your true self so that you have that true feeling of of inner peace. So many people feel like they just don't know who they are. And, and it's amazing when you start to see this clicking into place for people and, and you see them starting to feel like themselves again. It's beautiful. And I, I can I just interject one thing, you know, some, pe- to talk. <laughs> some people, yeah, I'm going to let you talk in a sec, you know, like Grant, but you know, a lot of people it, like listening to this might be thinking, well, this sounds a little bit woo woo, you know, like <laughs> how does how does this connect with my chronic illness? Right. I could tell you that when you're in that fight or flight state, it is an inflammatory state. And when you're dealing with inflammation like that, it's it's almost impossible to heal, right? If, especially if you have different uh, gut issues. I mean, so many different gut issues are, are related to inflammation, chronic pain. Uh, they've done many studies on like long haul COVID, obviously did. Depression, you know, depression, anxiety uh, disorders, um, but there's so many mechanisms as, as to how that works. And I can tell you that when I started to c- calm my nervous system down, I was never able to digest food before. Like I couldn't eat anything. I was down to three foods. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Mm-hmm. And you're not in a state of rest or digest. It's rest or digest or fight or flight, right? That's a simple fact. I mean, your vagus nerve doesn't function optimally when you're when you're um when you're in that fight or flight state your stomach acid uh you know isn't produced like it normally would be uh your your stomach lining uh gets worn away you could develop all these sort of overgrowth SIBO candida all that sort of stuff leaky gut so there is that connection there this is this is a scientifically proven uh well-researched area of health that I think is often overlooked I think everyone's trying to look for uh, you know, that sort of bottom up approach where you're trying to find protocols and supplements and everything else to fix your mental health issues or to fix your body. And what we really, really focus on is using the power of your brain and harnessing that to heal the rest of your body. Right. We do look at the other stuff as well. And the other stuff is is very important, maybe just as important. 
right? Or more important for some people, it really depends on the person. But this is a really overlooked aspect of health because a couple of things, it doesn't provide you with an immediate result, right? This isn't the type of thing where you just meditate once or twice or go through visualizations or work on vagus nerve exercises and whoo, I'm healed. This is great. You know, I'm, I'm just doing this for one week and all of a sudden everything's great. No, this takes a bit of time. It could take months. For some people who have been living with chronic illness, it could take years for this kind of practice. A lot of people, I don't know if you've had her on your channel, like uh, Ribeye Rachel. Uh, as a success story, we have. A success story, yeah. And she's brain retraining as, as part of her success. I mean, she could barely even get out of bed. She could barely yeah. walk. And for me, I've seen tremendous benefit from it. And um, I'm going to let you talk to him. <laughs> I love all of that. I love everything you said. And I love that... I don't think everybody needs to be 100% carnivore all the time. So I love that you address that. Now, I do think that for a lot of people, myself included, carnivore is where it's at. It fixed my brain itself, like without having to do anything extra, without having to do anything special. I had eating disorders and disordered eating my whole adult life. I bought my first diet pills when I was 12. I mean, I've always been on a diet. And carnivore, while we call it a diet, is a way of life and really did fix uh, me and all of those issues that I had. Um, is my life perfect? Am I perfect? No, but I'm pretty happy with myself. I think that um, it carnivore itself does some brain retraining on its own. Like you said, it really can make a huge difference. It You get all the inflammation out of the way, you get all the sugar and the carbohydrates out of the way. And I think as an elimination diet for everybody across the board, I think carnivore is the best idea as an elimination diet. And then like you said, some people want or need to add different things in. And then you find a landing place where you're eating things that aren't inflaming you and aren't making you not feel good. And sometimes people still have to pull it back a little bit and be more meat heavy for a little while to get some things out of their system. And then they can kind of go back. So I love all of those things. You both mentioned a little bit about your stories, but can we go over those? Scott, you want to start? Like what, what has your journey been like? What led you to where you are? Well, <clears throat> wow, that's interesting. Um, there's so much involved with that. I'll, I'll try to keep it as short as possible. About 15 years ago, I took a course of antibiotics. And I don't, I don't think I've ever really been the same since, to be honest with you. But I was going through a very stressful period of my life. Uh, this was around 2015, 2016. I just moved. I got married. Uh, you know, we're looking for a house. You know, I, I moved cities twice. I got rid of my business. Um, I had a bunch of death in my family, and um, it was a, it was a very chaotic period. Even the the good stressors were still massively stressful for me. So um, I was in this fight or flight state. You know, I started developing all sorts of problems, inflammation, uh, pretty much every every symptom you could imagine. But it wasn't quite at the point of complete hell just yet. Um, I actually started taking uh, psychotropic drugs. I took a benzodiazepine. I've heard a lot of people in the, in the carnivore community speak about their issues with, with psychotropic drugs. Um, I started taking benzodiazepine and uh, SNRI, and uh, that's when stuff really hit the fan for me. Um, when I withdrew from the benzodiazepine, I went through something called uh, what they sort of refer to as uh, uh, withdrawal syndrome, um, mm -hmm. protracted withdrawal syndrome. It's, it's never really gone away. And I think it's really just symptoms of sort of mast cell activation, to be honest with you, because benzodiazepines really act on mast cells. But, you know, just the brain fog and anxiety. And I mean, I could just go through symptoms all day long with you. The vision issues, skin issues, akathisia, like it's, it's just, it's terrible. And I still go through, it, but it's it's gotten considerably better from various parts of the past. But um, so I, I first learned about it, if you can believe this, I was on a beach in Hawaii. Uh, this is for my, uh, honeymoon and, uh, someone was reading a book on Jordan Peterson at the time and, uh, that I was talking to on the beach and Jordan Peterson, actually, if you could believe this lived in my neighborhood, but I never heard of him before. He lived in my neighborhood in Toronto where I was. And this guy was reading his book on the beach. And I was like, oh, what book are you reading? You know, I was just started chatting with this guy. He's like, oh, Jordan Pearson. Uh, you should know him. He he's, lives in Toronto. And I eventually, I was like, no, I, I've never heard of him before. And I learned he was lit literally just, just a couple streets over from me. And, um, and so I started researching him and learned about, learned about the carnivore diet. And the first book I got was Sean Baker's book. 
And I really started to do a deep dive on that. And I said, man, I got to try this because this looks awesome. And uh, I did the car, I, I did the carnivore diet and uh, things, it took me about a month before I saw, I, I think I was having some pretty severe uh, die-off reactions and that type of thing. But I started to see huge, huge benefits from it after, after a little while. And my story gets kind of long in the tooth because I started to taper these other meds I was taking. And I've, I've come down with bouts of food poisoning and all sorts of things have kind of derailed me a little bit uh, where I wasn't able to really tolerate meat anymore. Uh, so I've had this constant back and forth battle. Um, I hired coach Jen here, <laughs> who I, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I absolutely love this girl because in a lot of ways she saved my life. But that's how, that's how we met. I became oh, his, uh, like his food coach. Yeah. 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 She, she's kind of been my savior. Um, and I've kind of gone back to a point now where I could start eating a lot more meat again. And I'm mostly, mostly carnivore based. I'm, I'm not like a hundred percent. Um, I still aren't, I'm still not completely able to eat enough fat to sustain my energy. Mm-hmm. If you guys can't notice, I'm not the, the, uh, <laughs> I'm not the, the bulkiest guy around, you know, I still have some weight to gain, but, mm-hmm. um, but I'm, I'm much, feeling much better when I do eat carnivore, the anxiety, the <sighs> Just the 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 leaky gut, immune mast cell hell going on gets so much better. And I just feel so much better mentally. So um, I'm a huge proponent of the diet. Uh, but like you said, I, I think that uh, for a lot of us, uh, for me, it, it it took a lot more. I have a lot of stuff, past stuff I had to deal with. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is a huge gut-brain connection. I think for me, I think I need to work on both the gut and the brain to heal. Mm-hmm. Some people just need to work on the gut and the gut will obviously affect the brain, right? It's not, nothing is, um, joint disjointed here. It's all interconnected. So mm-hmm. anyway, that's, that's, that's my real story. And, and I can tell you when we first met, which was three years ago, I believe a little, a little bit over three years ago, looking at the person that I met then and the person that he is now, I can hardly recognize him. And the diet helped dramatically but there was also some backlash to that because of the oxalate dumping you know the the die off and detox and so it's not a fun ride for everybody and it was really a struggle for him but the one thing i think that made the biggest difference in his life was the limbic system retraining because i used to talk to him in the beginning now now i was his coach but he never listened to me okay like he would always ask my advice but he would never take it so i can't really (laughs) lay a claim to his health but um but I used to tell him all the time like you got to get out of the mindset because he would be in that that anxious brain your brain just wants to get in stuck in that cycle of research and diagnosing and fixing so there's just constant maybe the supplement's going to fix me maybe that food's going to and it's the right. same story for so many people you know it's not mm-hmm. he's not alone in that it's it's so common and so he was stuck in that cycle and it's like there needs to be a shift in the mindset you know, but, um, but that's what ended up making the biggest difference. And, and you could just tell it, obviously, like he became optimistic. He started wanting to help other people instead of only focusing on, you know, and not in a selfish way, he's never been Mm -hmm. selfish, but you become self-centered when you're chronically ill, your whole world revolves around, I've got to get better. I've got to get better. And I need to fix this. And so he was able to break out of that from, I need to fix this to, trusting the body to heal itself and that's the biggest thing i think the biggest foundation that we believe in is that our bodies are uniquely designed to heal themselves and when we give that power back to the body and instead of trying to fix it ourselves but we give it the tools that it needs in order for it to heal itself it's amazing what can happen so i just have to say like he's he's been through a lot but he's come so far and i and i think for him that key was really working on mindset and working on, you know, trusting the body to do what it, what it absolutely is capable of doing if it has the right environment, the right tools, you know, the right mindset. So it's pretty amazing. Your story. Well, um, so yeah, mine started as with insulin resistance as a child. I mean, it was severe and I was never a sugar eater. I grew up in California. My parents were always into health and wellness. And so I became addicted to fruit. I mean, we had the most amazing fruit out there all the time Mm -hmm. and fruits healthy, right? So we would have chicken breast. We had no fat in the house growing up ever. 
Like yep. no fat, everything was non-fat. So mm-hmm. And we had no sugar either, but it was this no sugar, no fat, mm-hmm. but it was a lot of, you know, other kind of carbohydrates, cereal and fruit and rice and those kind of things. And my dad had severe insulin resistance too. And so dad went sugar-free way back in the nineties. And like, we learned about protein power and we would kind of dabble in it, but not be great for a super long period of time. But anyway, that carried on um, into my twenties. I developed uh, PCOS and, you know, so you go to the doctor for these things. And my experience was you always learn, okay, you have hypoglycemia. So you just need to eat more often throughout the day. So you need to be eating something every three hours. (laughs) So I did that and I actually got into fitness and nutrition. Mm -hmm. And so I was a personal trainer. I was helping people with their food. I was running a gym. And so everything that I had learned was just so backwards, you know, still avoiding the fat. And so, you know, fixing your blood sugar by eating all the time. So the the real turning point for me in that regard was, uh, well, um, another thing I want to mention is during that period of time, my doctor for PCOS, the treatment is birth control. So I had never taken it in my life, but that's what you have to take when you have PCOS. Mm-hmm. So I went through two years of absolute hell trying different birth control pills. And that's when my anxiety and depression started. And it it got really bad and insomnia and fatigue. And yet, you know, they don't they won't listen to you. It can't possibly be the birth control. It's just that your family has a history of mental illness. And so it's a coincidence. Yeah. So then they gave me an SSRI and they gave me um, a benzo. And I I wasn't informed enough at that time to know better. So I did it. So anyway, the breaking point for me was um, I loved to go hiking and uh, I was going out to Colorado and and, uh, climbing those 14ers out there. And the guy that I was dating at the time, he was blessed in that he could not eat all day long and eat one big, massive 3000 calorie meal and be fine. And I could not do that. I had adapted to eating all the time. I had to, I mean, I would panic if I didn't have a protein bar on me at all times because my blood sugar would drop, but the doctors all focus on blood sugar. They don't focus on insulin. So I was completely unaware of what was happening. So we went out on this uh, climbing trip and I was so miserable the entire time. Like it was, I won't get into all the details, but like we flew into Vegas and we were driving to Zion national park. And so we thought we'd get up and we would go eat a big breakfast once we kind of got a little bit closer. So we got up and had Starbucks coffee um, on an empty stomach with a scone. So caffeine and carbs. Uh-huh. And by the time we got into Zion, you know, my boyfriend was like, Hey, let's, um, let's just wait. Let's not eat yet. Let's go hiking and we'll come back and eat a big dinner. And because I didn't respect myself at the time, I was like, sure, let's do what you want to do. So <laughs> I ended up, my blood sugar fell so low that it was dangerous. Um, by the time, like we had to turn around hiking and I was about to pass out the whole time, got back. I was so, my blood sugar was so low that I couldn't even eat food. I tried to get food in my mouth and could not get the food in my mouth. So he had to go get me ice cream and and get ice cream in my mouth just just to get my blood sugar up enough. So that was the turning point for me. I'm like, this is affecting every aspect of my life. It's miserable. It's affecting other people. I can't live like this anymore. And that was about eight years ago. And I came home and I started researching and researching and researching and learned the truth about blood sugar and and insulin. So I started with keto and that was my entry into this world and learning that everything I thought about food was backward. So I learned about insulin. Um, I started keto diet, but it was a dirty keto. It wasn't a super healthy keto. Um, I was eating a lot of commercial dairy. I was eating, um, which is you know fine for some people, but it wasn't great for me. A lot of nuts you know, almond flour and coconut flour and and Mm -hmm. uh, kind of depending on those foods. So then the more that I learned, because I got in that taste of the truth, I'm like, what else is out there? I just got that insatiable thirst for truth. And so that's when I started learning about plants and reading, you know, the carnivore code and and hearing all Mm -hmm. these, all these amazing people out there like Jordan Peterson. So I just kept weeding food groups out of my diet. Mm -hmm. And what made I think it lucky for me is that I didn't do it all at once. A -hmm. lot of people that have the most severe carnivore reactions tend to just jump in the deep end. And some people are fine with that, but other people, it can, it can really be difficult. So for me, it was just starting with keto and then slowly weeding things out of my diet. And 
my energy went through the roof, you know, where I was crashing all the time. You know, my sleep was horrible before my, my fatigue improved, my mood improved, my bloating improved. So I really started doing well, but then I had these psych meds that I was on that I didn't need anymore. And so as I started removing those, I started kind of removing the masks of histamine intolerance. So I developed really severe to the point of like throwing up at work. I started having panic attacks, um, insomnia came back. I mean, I isolated myself to where I wasn't spending time with my best friends or my family. I, I just couldn't really respond. Mm -hmm. So I went through a year that was really, you know, dark and scary. And so my my diet was great and I had I had seen so many benefits, but I think that a lot of times chronic illness happens in order to force us to become willing to do whatever we need to do to feel okay. Mm -hmm. And so I started prioritizing self-care finally. And it was through meditation for me. I started meditating. I started learning about the ego identity, learning about the true self. And that's what that's what changed my life and brought me back to life, as I say, because mm -hmm. the carnivore diet brought me back to health. Mm -hmm. But meditation and, and self-discovery brought me back to life. And that's when I was able to start really respecting and loving myself and prioritizing my care, getting sunlight every day, grounding every day, meditating every day being willing to say no for the first time in my life um, and just kind of figuring out who this person is by spending time with myself. And that is what really changed everything for me. Um, and that also allowed like the amazing thing about brain retraining is it can, when you work with your nervous system, it calms your body down to the point that it doesn't think everything is a threat anymore. So your food reactions go down, your reactions to stimuli and stress go down and you're able to kind of see beyond yourself. So that's my my long journey. It's literally been a lifelong one of just mm -hmm. learning and learning and getting the veil removed and seeing more truth. And then that truth makes you want to see what else is out there yeah. until you finally kind of get to that ultimate state of truth where mm -hmm. you know who you are and you know to trust your own self more than trusting mm -hmm. you know the media or anyone else. Yeah, and it's so hard because our whole lives we believe a certain set of truths, um, and then it gets to the point where you have you could you will look at people and you will say, "I have literally tried everything, and I can't fix this. The doctors can't fix this." Like, head, right? Right. Yeah, that's what they say, right? Yeah, it's always in your head. Um, but you get to a point where you you think you've tried everything. But then for most people, if you say, why don't you try carnivore? They say, what? That's ridiculous. I'm going to go over here and, you know, get a shamrock shake instead. Like they don't question the shamrock shake, right? I think I mentioned the shamrock addicted to those. I think I mentioned the shake to in the interview I did yesterday too. So people are going to think I'm on a, I'm on a quest <laughs> against McDonald's when I'm really not, but I don't even know what that is. It's, it's a it's a milkshake that they release once a, a time of year around. Oh, it's day. green okay. and it's terrible for you. It's horrible. <laughs> I um, love it. Love yeah, it. yeah. Well, it probably tastes really good. That's the problem. <laughs> is that it probably tastes really good? Yeah. Okay, so let's get down to business and talk about the retreat because I'm super yeah. excited and honored to be a part of that retreat. And when I look at the graphic that you guys have made with all those pictures of all the people on it, the idea that I am one of those people just blows me away. I'm honored and grateful that you would include me. I'm super excited about it. So, um, so let's talk about who else is going to be there and what you do at this retreat and um, and how things work. Well, the main let me say one thing first. The main thing is we also want to learn more about all this stuff. And so this is why we have gotten this group of all these amazing people together. Like these are, are the best people in the field. So we have handpicked all of these experts for a reason because we want to learn and we want you guys to be able to meet people and learn. And that's that's the main thing. We're we're going to to learn, but also our main concept of where for healing and for the retreat is returning to our natural state. So we want people to have access to the people who know how to do that but also to learn the skills um, to implement in different things. So not just food, but also lifestyle things that you can do and also mindset things you can do. And there's going to be meditation and yoga. And we really want people to feel like they walk away from this thing with the tools that they need to make those shifts in their life that are going to get them back to that sense of true well-being. Yeah. 
so so yeah so just going through the the guest list right um we call this an animal based retreat so you know anyone's welcome to come but we got dr sean baker um uh, and most of these people are staying with us between the two retreats mm -hmm. so um uh, they'll be staying with us like at the uh second half of the first retreat and the first half of the second retreat mm -hmm. that makes sense yeah so we've got dr Dr. Sean Baker. Yeah, uh, so that way, if you, regardless of whether you choose to come to the first one or the second one, because it's uh, f uh, four and a half days and four and a half days, or yeah, right? yeah, about five right. days, five days. Mm -hmm. And so, whether or not you come to the first one or the second one, you're going to get the benefit of all the guest speakers. Yeah, you know? exactly. So, obviously, uh, Dr. Baker is a big name that probably a lot of people on your channel have heard about. Uh, we have uh, Kelly Hogan coming, Dr. Kiltz, Sally Norton, who's who's a great friend of mine she came to her last retreat she's a rock star oh she's great she she's hardcore she's hardcore yeah. she yeah. is a rock star I love Sally Norton I love I love all of the people uh, and, and just Norton. the yeah and, and you know for those of people who haven't tuned us out yet she actually on her license plate has uh what is it oxalate oh. oxalate on her license plate. yeah um anyway said low low ox something. yeah low ox low. yeah Lower, lower. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, that is a boss right there. Anyway, yeah. and then we got, you know, Stephanie Person who's on your channel recently, mm -hmm. Michelle Hearn, Dr. Kelly Ritter, uh, okay. Courtney, Courtney Luna, who's a, a great friend of ours. I absolutely love her to death. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. We got JC Gregory, another, and she's a, actually a coach in our community. JC Gregory who's also known as Lady Carnivory. Uh, and we have Serena. I, Serena I love Serena. all those people so much. <laughs> Audra Coleman as well. Yeah. So we have we have so many, so many great people coming on board. Uh, we have really great sponsors as well. And uh, we just want to get, you know, different, you know, people with different expertises in different areas. But carnivore is sort of the main focus. We're also going to be visiting a regenerative uh, uh, farm as well. Mm -hmm. um and uh where we source a lot of our food like skillet farm have to give them a plug mm -hmm. um they are the the coolest most regenerative farm is the, the probably the biggest learning experience i've ever had in terms of how my food is made mm -hmm. just the, just farming just everything this guy knew everything yeah but this is good. yeah but this is going to be the ultimate educational you know lots of presentations workshops activities serena is going to teach us how to cook carnivore foods um and you know and having fun and spiritualism and you know self-awareness like the, and 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 i think most importantly is having community one thing that really struck me the most at our last retreat is that you've only known these people for like four four, four or five days right and at the end of the retreat people were tearing up saying goodbye mm -hmm. and, and myself included i'm not a i'm not a crier but that's how deep of a connection you can make somebody at these things, just living with them for four days. Yeah. Right. It feels like you and you build these lasting friendships. And I really want to give people the opportunity that you don't really get at places like keto con or, mm -hmm. or other sort of carnivore type things or, or conferences or whatever, where, you know, you go to keto con, there's like 2000 people there. Right. And you get a picture with Dr. Baker, maybe you'll say hi. No, you're going to be living with Dr. Baker for for a few days, you know, and you're going to get a good chance or Serena or anyone. And you're going to get a chance to really meet these people and talk to them and learn from them and, you know, share your life with these people. You know what I mean? So I think that is such a beautiful experience, such a rare experience for people to have. And um, and I'm yeah, I'm just I'm just absolutely excited for it yeah it is great that in a retreat type setting it's just so much more intimate you know you have you have time to get to know the people that are there and our main goal is we want people to walk away feeling inspired feeling educated feeling connected because so many people in the chronic illness community or even the carnivore community they don't have people they can relate to in their lives or they've had to isolate themselves as i've had to so you miss out on other like-minded people that are going through the same things as yourself. And we really feel like that social connection. I mean, there are studies to prove how much we need social interaction. If COVID didn't teach us enough, we know <laughs> we need to, to social interaction, but it can be difficult, especially in your life, if you've got people that don't understand your way of life. And so this kind of community understands. And I have yet to meet any leaders 
or followers in this whole community who ha- are not the most warm, kind, compassionate, empathetic people. I mean, they want people to feel better and to do better and to learn, and they want to share their stories. And it's it's through sharing that we learn the most about ourselves as well. So we want everybody to walk away from this thing to to really feel our focus is out, I think. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Um, uh, so when, maybe, when Scott coughed it. Yeah. I was trying so hard not to. So um, we just, we really want people to walk away from this feeling, you know, feeling inspired and feeling like they know themselves a little bit better. I think it's amazing. I was only there for one day at the last one and I teared up when I was leaving. I mean, that's how, and I had never met anybody there before except for Kelly Hogan. And I, and then when she left, you know, like I didn't want her to leave. None of us wanted her to leave when she left. Um, but then as I was leaving, I remember just like this feeling of, of dread to just having to say goodbye to yeah. everybody, you know, JC helped me cook. And it was, it was just such a, such a crazy emotional thing to go in and see these people that you're friends with online that you've talked to. I had interviewed Sally. I had talked to Scott before I had, you know, I had talked to JC a lot online, JC, JC and I are friends, you know, talked to her a lot, what? but JC she- cried the second she met you. I know. <laughs> she, so, she is the sweetest. <laughs> she is. I love her so much. I love so many of the people so much. And then even the people who were attendees, of it that came and hugged me when I got there and that I have kept in touch with since then to be able to continue to talk to people that you met at something like that. Uh, it was really, it was really amazing. And JC's uh, speech, you know, was um, you guess you get to sit in on these private moments with these people mm-hmm. that have already made a difference in your life, maybe, or even people that you've never heard of, but you get to sit in on these private moments and just you feel the love in the room. And when JC was done, almost everybody was crying. You know, I mean, it was just such an emotional thing to see the raw. So these are happy tears, guys. Yes, happy tears. Yeah. All the time. Although it was, uh, what's so funny is that Scott's always like, I'm not a crier. I'm not a crier. I, I've only known him three years. I've, you know, seen him cry dozens of I times. I cry every day. But <laughs> I, I'll tell you, listen. Not to run a crier. I'm I'm known to make the ladies cry, so yeah, so apologize for that in advance. Yeah. So, but it was it was happy tears. It was um it was those emotional like when you're with somebody who is um getting their feelings out like this you know like talking about their it's moving. vulnerable yes yeah. moving yeah. yeah their childhood or you know their sicknesses or whatever and you get this lump in your throat and then before you know it you're crying a little bit like you just are it's just such an honor to witness um to wow. witness that. And the amazing thing too is a lot of times when we when we see these carnivore advocates or these experts in the field, you know, when you're looking at their social media or you're hearing them talk, it's easy to think that it's just easy for them and that they've never had struggles or that they never have struggles currently. And when you meet people in person, you have real conversations with them, you realize this is not easy for everybody, right? Like we're all right. in this boat together. And the way I like to look at it is we're all just walking each other home, right? Right. And so we're there to support each other. And, and the crowd is just so, it's such an open crowd, willing to be vulnerable, willing to share that we all struggle and to help share share tools with each other on how to get through it. Yeah, I think it's amazing. And so tell people how they can get tickets to the retreat and when it is, when the two are, they they piggyback off each other. Yeah, uh, so they could go to our website, wiredforhealing.com uh, or wiredforhealing.com slash retreats. Uh, they could use the code Serena 100 to get $100 off of their uh, ticket price. Uh, you can either pay in full or pay uh, a deposit for now. Um, and really, that's it. I mean, it's it's it's, it's a pretty simple process. Well, the uh, retreat is um, April 26th uh, to May 2nd is the first one. Is that right? No, to April 30th. 20, 26th to 30th. 26th to 30th and then 30th and then to May 4th. 30th to May 4th. Okay. Um, and it's in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. It's this amazing mansion that has like natural woodworking all over the place. Incredible right. views. Right in the Smoky Mountains. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. So there'll be outdoor stuff to do and indoor stuff to do, right? Lots, right. Lots. Yep. We're going to do some hiking outside. We're going to the farm tour. We're going to have meditation, yoga, all kinds of good activities. And um Yeah. And uh, obviously, you know, the, the the real focus is the presentations that we want this to be as educational as an experience as possible. And for people out there who are, are struggling or just want to learn to live 
more optimally. I mean, you, mm -hmm. there's always area for, for self-improvement. Um, you're, we're gonna have so many different voices there and you're gonna have access to all of these people in a very intimate setting. Sorry, hang on. Sure. Well, I think that's amazing. And I am so excited to be a part of it. And so if you guys don't have your tickets yet, go ahead and get them before the cabin fills up because there's only room for a certain amount of people. And we want you to be able to get a ticket if that's something that you want to be involved in. So make sure you guys do that now. And Jen and Scott, this was amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today and spreading the word about the retreat. I think it's going to be amazing. We're super excited. Thanks for having us on. We appreciate it. Love you. We love you, Serena. Yeah, you're the best. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, we'll talk to you soon. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on the Carnivore Revolution. Bye, guys.